just comparing two things that shouldn't ever be compared. I think um, she's saying that there's fighters who are in the Islamic State getting killed, um, and she's comparing that, you know, those people go there knowing what to expect. They they, they sacrifice their lives and they know what could happen. People who went to, to the Manchester Arena, they went there to take the kids to a concert. They went there thinking they were going to get home that night. Do you think she needs a reality check? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think this country, there's already so many questions whether this country did enough to stop the suicide bomber at Manchester. And I don't think this country can afford um, the more risk. Today, the head of Scotland Yard said Shamila Begum would be investigated and potentially arrested if she did come back to Britain. John Hill, ITV News. Obviously, with us still to come on the programme this evening, we're looking skyward for a very special fly pass of RAF tornado jets as they say goodbye after 40 years of service. And the crocuses are out, the temperatures are on the up, it's a breeze in the air, but there is one fly in the ointment. Join me soon for the very latest forecast. been confirmed that deep sea divers will begin looking for the body of missing Lincolnshire pilot David Ibbotson next week. The pilot went missing the day's plane crashed in the English Channel a month ago with footballer Emiliano Sala at his side. Mr Ibbotson's family has raised almost a quarter of a million pounds to privately fund their search. The ITV Evening News continues at 6.30. Here's Mary Nightingale. Honda says don't blame Brexit as it confirms more than 3,000 job losses in the UK. It's shutting its factory in Swindon, citing changes in the global car industry. New homes could be hit with a penny tax to emphasize the survey fashion. And we look back at the life of the designer Carl Lagerfeld, who died at the age of 85. So do join me for those stories and more at 6.30. Very fancy. Now, since he became the youngest Lord Mayor of Sheffield last year, Majid Majid has been no stranger to controversy. From announcing that Donald Trump was banned from coming to the city to accusations that he's undermining the traditional role of the Lord Mayor with his irreverent behaviour. Well, in May, his term will come to an end. He'll also step down as the Green Councillor for Sheffield's Broom Hill and Shower Vale Ward. But before he does, Adam Fowler went to spend a day in the life of Majid. Since the role was created in 1843, there's been something familiar about Sheffield's Lord Mayors. That is, until now. <laughs> You've become a sort of international phenomenon. <laughs> Born in Somalia, Majid Majid came to Sheffield aged five. Back then, he couldn't speak English. Now, he's the city's youngest ever Lord Mayor. And here, is how he spends a typical day. Day in the life of me. With a busy schedule ahead, Majid's driver, Eric, helps him into his mayoral chains. Eric then gets the mayoral car ready. Oh, oh, back, and it's off to the first thing in. I'm going to Hollywood by this day. Just to go and explore, have a chat, see the great work that the country are doing, and just meet lots of awesome young kids at the same time. Some of those kids are there to meet him at the gate. Welcome to Hollywood. My name's Ryan. I'm a new and I'm in the school council. And where are you working at? Ryan. Inside, he faces quick-fire questions, including, is he wearing a chain because he's the king? Why is he wearing a hat? And does he live in a mansion? Sadly, I don't. So I live in a normal house. One of the great things about being Lord Mayor is, Anybody can become Lord Mayor, so you don't have to be rich or live in a big mansion or anything like that. And it means anybody, even anybody in this room, any of you guys can become Lord Mayor. The Lord Mayor is then serenaded. After that, it's dancing. Really good. 
role model for the children in the school and around the world. Some males definitely were very blessed, like very strict, or like they were like saints, but he really just wears what he wants. All too soon, the trick is over, and it's off to Virgin's next appointment at Sheffield Pacific. Here, they test the quality of gold, silver, and platinum. Virgin's taken on a tour and can't resist the urge to test the male chins. Five carat gold. <laughs> City centre before they can make it from the car to the town hall, he's spotted by the kids of Woodfall Primary School. Hi guys. Yeah, what's your name? Hey, I'm Peter. What's your name? Who all want a picture with the Lord Mayor. It's a common theme throughout the day. I'm gonna give you a fiver for it if you'll sign it for me. Oh good. To sell the big issue for an hour and manages to flog 26. That's more than the lead singer of Reverend and the Makers and the mayor of Greater Manchester. Pretty fantastic. I think he sold 20 with another person coming and trying to buy another copy, but he's already sold that out, so this is the first time that Sheffield has sold out of big issues. Talking of big issues, Majid Majid hasn't shied away from them since taking up the role in May, and he's received fierce criticism for doing so. To jog your memory, he announced the US president was a waste man and banned from Sheffield. He wore a white poppy instead of a red one on Remembrance Sunday. He made his own Ten Commandments, speaks out against Brexit and wants a second referendum. There have been petitions to remove him from the role and petitions to keep him in it. There are plenty of people who say that in your role as Lord Mayor you should stay out of it and remain apolitical. First of all, there's nothing in my job description that's allowed to be politically neutral. The only time I have to be politically neutral is when I'm chairing a council meeting, which I am all the time. I am a black Muslim immigrant. I haven't got the privilege of remaining politically neutral. I'm not saying I'm not saying that. Well, Majid Majid doesn't like being called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a black Muslim immigrant. He's not allowed to be called a when you go out and you express these views, whatever they may be, there are some people who say, well, who's the Lord Mayor of Sheffield? He should represent everybody. I don't agree with what he's saying. Therefore, he's not representing me. Therefore, he's not doing his job. You can't represent everybody. That's just a matter of fact. I can't make everybody happy. By me going to an event, I'm endorsing that event. I'm neglecting an entire group of other people. I'm sorry people didn't even know who the Lord Mayor was before me. I couldn't remember who the Lord Mayor before me was. But it's just the fact that it's a great platform to really do something. Don't get me wrong, I'm human. I, I am literally like, oh my God, am I having to do this? Like, is this the right thing to do? I, I doubt myself quite often. But it's, I just go back to just what my gut feeling tells me and just what my heart tells me and I just go with it. After lunch, it's off to the Sheffield and District African Caribbean Community Association the relaunch of a library dedicated to black history and culture. Also, the reopening of its music studio. It's been a fairly typical day for someone who says he turns down about 90% of his invitations. There have been 121 previous Lord Mayors of Sheffield. No matter what you think of Majid Majid, few can argue that there's ever been one quite like him. Adam Fowler, ITV News, Sheffield. Well, next tonight, to an award ceremony recognising a vast range of achievements, including business, sport, education and art. Yes, 300 people have been nominated for the 7th British Muslim Awards, and for the second time, Bradford is hosting the event. Victoria Wisdom is there live for us now. Victoria. Hi, Christine. Hi, Duncan. Yes, well, as you can see, this beautifully, opulently laid out room is all set for the British Muslim Awards. Awardism around the globe is in full swing, and there'll be people coming from right across the country dressed to impress in the hope of scooping one of the awards here tonight. Now, let me tell you, there's no shortage of talent. Around 300 people have been shortlisted for just 31 awards. That's not many to go around, so they'll be nervously waiting to find out if they've got one. And that includes Asma here, who's been nominated as the sports rising star. Asma, tell me, why have you had that nomination? So, I've been nominated on campaign to be there to allow Mr Moon to wear the hijab in professional basketball. Because it's 